to that tab. Okay. Well, that's what happened. You open up things. Okay, this is all okay. I'm and this is not a spring chicken today. We're going to be talking about the changing face of reality TV. Which is exactly the same face that's always been about reality TV, which is why people that are in the business Okay, we'll put it this I'm from the beginning of television, and I know what happens in reality TV. It causes problems. Well, part of it is, I mean, we, we, I mean we're in a, a unique situation because we're located here in Southern California. So we see the reality TV, and we understand that reality TV is, well... It's all scripted to begin with. Mm -hmm. they get, you don't get an Emmy Award for, uh, you know, unless you're saying, oh! I didn't realize there were people out there filming when the girl comes out of this bathroom with a towel in front of her hand. You know, mm -hmm. with the, you know, we're talking, you know, she's got something that this big. Oh, I didn't realize that there was a camera crew out there. And they, they give Emmys for that, folks. Mm -hmm. So part of it is, is, first of all, what is the fascination with reality TV other than it's cheap programming or people like to watch a train wreck? Um, they, they want to watch a train wreck because it, I was there, we, actually she got a chance to see um, Cinema Verity, which is the story of the first family of reality TV, the Louts. I was there when, um, I, I remember the proclamation, you know, by the uh, head of the news division over at the TV station I was at, said, they said that television is now officially dead when people are watching pure OD BS. Well, one of the things in Cinema Verity, which was about the Loud family, we just saw it in a, an Emmy screening from, for The Rap. Yeah. And I remember in one of the, um, well, actually episodes or one of the scenes where the, he was telling them, he says, you've shot X amount of rolls of film. Yeah. This is when they had film. And they said, there's, what, what are people going to watch? There's nothing. There's no drama. There's nothing. It's boring. Yeah. Well, right? We'll fix it in the editing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is basically, here's the thing. Okay. Basically, the, 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 it was the, the, you know, the guy's wife who wanted to be a star. Mm -hmm. She was middle-aged, wanted to be a star, and she figured, oh, good, I can do this. And because she knew she was going to have, because she was a control person. She controlled everything. Only problem was, she didn't realize it, her husband didn't realize it, and the children didn't realize it, that the editor decides exactly how things are going to be. Not you. And the producer or, or the director could sit in the editing room, he could make Adolf Hitler look like a Sunday school teacher that loved children. That's how, and that's what happened was, they took, every, they took things out of context and made a show, and uh, let's put it this way, that TV series is only being allowed to be shown once every 10 years because of the I court know. orders. They can haul it out That's once. a really big deal. Although, now since they did Cinema Verite, mm -hmm. which is about it, that's not restricted by the court orders. No, but Cinema Verite was a negative look at, at, look at uh, reality television. We were, we were told when this thing started that it was uh, bottom, bottom feeding on television. That once you went down this path, you know, it's sort of like, like I talk about the Academy Awards. The Academy Awards has passed the depot and it's never going to go back, which means they basically got rid of everybody, you know, well, those people, who cares whether they watch television, who cares whether they do 90% of the buying? We want the people that are relevant, which are those people that don't watch television. Well, you know, part of it is, is I think part of it has to do with the fascination of reality TV for people. Okay. The networks like it. I swear it's because it's cheap programming, right? It's the only reason they like it is because mm -hmm. it. Okay, um, we, we have an example here with the gentleman. What's his name? Um, uh, Russell Armstrong, who basically was bad mouthed, maligned, and everything so much he couldn't take it anymore. And he is the husband or estranged husband for Taylor Armstrong for um, the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Yeah, and they said that. Uh, the, what happens is, is they push things too far, and like they did with the Louds, and then they end up in litigation, and the mm -hmm. litigation is probably going to result in this, this, this show not being picked up again. Well, you know, I don't even know if they're going to, they're, they're getting ready to air the second, what, the second season? No, they're, getting, they're, they're discussing right now uh, whether or not to put it on, because they did this with, uh, I think, a reality series on MTV about a bunch of kids or something based on a British television series 
and it was it was basically they called it kitty porn. They did this, they did that. They know what, what the average person like I said, we're going to try to fix, explain it to you again. Reality TV when it started was unscripted, but well, then as no, but remember, a lot. remember as it was going on, they started scripting what was being done. You know, okay, like uh, you know, I you know I, what guy. You know, Tim Robbins was playing, you know, the husband family. He said, I, you know, this isn't what we want. We, I think we, you know, we need to do it this way. So after they did it, the instant you come back and do it again, that's called scripting. Mm -hmm. And they would go back and redo things to try to make it better. And what happened was the director and the producer was the same person. He sat there and put the pieces in that they didn't want in. Mm -hmm. But it's still scripted. And uh, this stuff is all phony as heck. When they're insulting a guy, I mean, it, well, here's here's part of it is with reality TV, and it's it's like we see this going on over and over. People, I'm like, why do people like to watch Snooki, right? Yeah. And they say, well, it's a train wreck. People think and they're like, well, she can really drink that much and all, you know, whatever. I mean, whatever hearsay you hear, people watch it because it kind of takes them out of their own reality into watching something else. Well, that's why. Um, okay, why did people watch gangster movies in the 1930s? Because mm -hmm. Jack L. Warner said that. Uh, um, basically, the parents would warn the children, that could be you, and the parents would think, uh, you know, I'm so much better off than they are. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's the whole trick. And then why did musicals come up? Because the economy started changing, and you no longer could warn your children about, okay, don't do this because we're going to do this. But here, here's the reality of it is, like I've heard, it's like the people on reality TV were not, tr although, here, here's the funny part is, you'd say they're not trained actors and actresses. Although they do have reality TV parties where they recruit models, yeah. actors, actresses to be on reality TV. But not all of them were actors or actresses. They no. thought, you what know, happened? it was about them and they wanted to be famous. So or they whatever all reason, have... they allow them to come into their lives. Uh, but the trick is, every single person that does reality TV is a frustrated wannabe. You're, you know, if you're an actor, you know, I mean, actually, we do know people that basically wanted to be performers, they found out, you know, they couldn't be performers, so they jumped into another area. Then all of a sudden, they had a chance to to be performers, so they, okay, we'll take the role. Then all of a sudden, they found out, oh my God, what have I gotten myself into? Because I'm not like that person, they portrayed me one way, or right? Yeah, they made me look like I was, you know, uh, uh, you know, like I was, uh, you know, a lovesick loon or something, which I wasn't, you know. Well, I mean, I'm sitting there watching because, I mean, part of it is these, this is what's going on right now. This is current. Um, um, what, um, John and Kate plus eight. Which basically became Kate plus eight when they got rid of John. Because mm -hmm. what happened was the owners of the network, I think it was Disney owns the thing, wanted to make her a glamour star. That's why they put her on Dancing with the Stars. But they also said the only person that ever looked worse on Dancing with the Stars than Bristol Palin was <laughs> Kate Gosling. They said she looked like a, a beached whale trying to dance. And they spent a fortune on getting her in shape, getting you know, makeup, all that. But the people, they didn't like the woman. Nobody likes well, the woman. Part of, what was the fascination with John, John and Kate plus eight? They, I, had, they had eight kids. They had eight kids? Yeah. And it was to watch the interaction of the couple bounce around with all the eight kids. Yeah, in fact, it was impossible. What happened was they drove him away, and then when he's, he's picking, he's, he, one of the things he did was, you know, he's taking money out of the program, which was his. Mm -hmm. So they went to court, to, you know, they, basically they got nothing but bad press. And they chased the husband away, mm -hmm. ended up with a divorce, ended up with every, every piece of bad stuff that you could have go wrong with this show went wrong with it. And that wasn't the plan. They wanted to focus on her because he was a, basically, he was a, like, it was an Asian slob. Oh. You know, and they basically, you know, he's a bad father, he's this, he's that. But this woman, is, she's got these kids, she's taking care of them. She had a nanny, she had all this thing going right. on. Right. She had everybody in the world do it, and she didn't have a husband to help anymore. What they did was they took what made the series what it was and got rid of it. It's the same thing as, um, uh, okay, what it was, they, they, they jumped a shark, mm -hmm. which is a term. You know, basically what happens when you go one step too far with your television show. Mm -hmm. Because it goes with, um, you know, like uh, on Happy Days, they had an episode where they came to California and Fonzie jumped the shark cage. 
which was one step too far because why would Fonzie jump a shark cage? Mm. And basically then after that, the, you know, Ron Howard left the show and everything changed. Well, and part of it is they film these episodes and then you get to watch them later, right? Oh, okay. so, so they're not live. So, for example, one of my friends worked on, what is it, Survivor or Temptation yeah, Island? Yeah, Temptation and, Island. And, you know, and you're watching things like The Bachelor and The Bachelor Pad because she watches all these things and we talk about it. And she's like, you know what, people don't understand because her job was after they competed and after they got voted out. Yeah. Okay? You always think, oh, they leave in the limo, right? Or they leave, or they leave wherever the island. Yeah. No, what happens is because part of it is if people know they've been cast, yeah. Then it's like, wait a minute, they're still filming. How come this person's at home? They don't understand that because they're not yeah. still filming. No. So what happens is the people that get voted off or out go to a different part of the island, yeah. right? And so while all these people are still filming, all these other people. She's like, it was my job to keep them occupied okay, and I, find things for them to do all the time. Yeah, there's no such thing as a real reality show. I mean, uh, go listen to Steve Wallenzak, who said, you know, they give me $200,000 to show up and told me I wasn't going to win. Mm -hmm. And he said he didn't care. He got to be on television. He got to dance. He's, you know, he said he, was the, he wasn't a beach whale. He was just a whale. <laughs> you know, he couldn't dance, but he got to be on this show. But he lost. And, and like they, he, he wasn't expecting and to. And they, they, like they tell people, most of these people, a lot of times they have ones that they really want to win and they'll, they'll get injured. Mm -hmm. Because you know that does happen sometimes. You, you know you wanted um, Jane, Jane Seymour. Seymour to win, or you wanted uh, Jewel to win because they're really attractive. Plus Seymour said, "If I win, you're going to see the side of Mrs. Uh, you know, of a uh, you know, medicine woman that you've uh -huh. never seen for uh, real." Uh, Quinn. But Doctor Quinn Medicine, and basically, so she all of a sudden remembered. Oh, that's why I stopped being a ballet dancer because she ruptured a chili tendon. Mm -hmm. All of these people that want to win used to be dancers. Mm -hmm. And all of them quit dancing for the same reason. They got injured, and basically they hadn't danced in like a decade or more. And what happens? They all do the damage again. 